What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. So yeah, mega update on both of my reef tanks. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the fish, the coral, and the filtration, and the lighting for both tanks. It's going to be a long video. I am going to name off as many of the corals as I possibly can on the 75, as well as the nano tank. So let's go right into it. So, of course, I'm still running all four of the XR15 G4 Pros with the diffusers. And I still have that little mesh guard that I did in the back there. All the fish are still in here. And the firefish have actually uh, gotten along now. So these two, they stay this side of the tank. And the other two, you can see one there and there's one behind the rock. Oh, there he is. Those two stay on that side of the, the tank. Once in a while, they do meet up with each other, and they chase each other around for a little bit, but that's it. It's almost like they've paired up, and they've gone their separate ways, which is really good. All the other fish are doing very, very good. The three pajama cardinals are doing awesome. The four baby chromis are doing really good. This long-nosed hawkfish, man, he's awesome. Long-nosed hawkfish and the mimic tang are spectacular. And again, those four firefish are just chilling. I still have my tiger conch in here. I'm not sure where he is, but that guy I've had for just about three years. He's still chilling and doing good. Oh, look at the sand bed. Flawless. So, like I said um, in the previous video for the diatoms, the 75, I just attacked with water changes and a brand new RODI membrane and carbon blocks and pre-sediment filter. I rinsed out all of my reservoirs, even my auto top off reservoir on the side of the tank. I scrubbed that clean and the, look at the sand. Look at the sand. Let me see here. There you go. Look at it. It's awesome. It's awesome. So, and you'll see the sand over there as well. So let's get right to it. So the tank is 16, 17 months old now, I think, and it's crushing it. The Carib Sea arches are still flawless and totally covered in coralline algae. These things, I base a lot of the success on this tank due to these rocks because it allows so much surface area for coral and so much like swim throughs and a lot of flow for the uh, current to get through and not get hung up on all, you know, a lot of the detritus does get blown off of these rocks. So it's really good. Anyway, so the fish, rock, sand bed, lights, they're all doing really well. Now let's get to some of the coral. This zoanthid rock is taken off. Um, you guys can see here, I'll kind of point it out. These are the Playboy bunnies. These are the Yodas. Then over here we got the Halle Berries. Some scrambled eggs to the right. Those are the Sour Apple Reds, I think they're called, or Candy Apple Reds in the back. Rainbow Infusions. These purplish pink looking ones are the pink diamonds, then a huge colony of Rastas, then the uh, the Green Bay Packers right there, and then one little random, you guys can see it right there, one little random vamps and drag. Oh, also from the side here, we rarely go to this side of the tank, so there you go, there's the side shot. You can also see some little lazy lashes popping up out of nowhere, there's a green radioactive two of them back there so this rock is healthy and the zoanthids are growing like weeds on it then down here still got that gsp totally encrusted to the plug now that's going the jason fox uh, jack-o-lantern really growing fast got my uh, jawbreaker right there these are the forest fire mushrooms oh remember that sunblaze mushroom i got like a month ago not even Look, it's already splitting. It's almost two complete mushrooms. And then the Sunkiss bounce, bounce is doing really well. Also, as you guys can see here, let's uh, get a little better quality there. Look at that. Look at that. OG bounce mushroom. That's one of the most recent. That is the most recent frag that I got. OG bounce. It's a tiny little baby, but you know what? All the other mushrooms do fine in this tank, so I'll probably let that one just chill there for quite a while. It seems to be very happy. I'd like to put it up on the rock there, but I think I'm going to give this guy its own little rock. You never know. Uh, the Western Australian Duncan, still 
doing good, branching, encrusting to the rocks, looking real good. Let's go to the top of the tank. So I got this Forest Fire Digi, which again, as you can see, it's awesome. That's the Dave's ORA, ORA Green Bird's Nest. In the back there is a, it's like a forest green colored, um, it's either a bird's nest or a stylo, I'm not sure. Then the, look at this thing, this is the Blue Zing. This thing's getting big fast. Along with the purple stylo. There's not much room before they're going to touch there. They're reaching for each other. Not sure what I'm going to do there yet. I think I think I might cut back the stylo a little bit. It's got a thicker base. It's a little bit better. Oh, you can see here that the stylo has based out quite a bit. And it's already starting to shoot off. If this fish gets a, two little branches there. So that's going to be growing nice. And then in the back, it's another like neon green stylo. Now the gold torches. So I got the Aussie gold right there. These two up here are from Murphy's Aquatics. These are exclusives. The one on the right is the Rising Phoenix. And the one on the left right there is the Solar Eclipse. The Solar Eclipse has three heads. And the Rising Phoenix has two. Those things are love and life. Coming down here. So this is the really cool looking frog spawn I got from Murph. This is one that I got from an LFS. This is like a bright pink gold hammer. Love this thing. Branching hammer. It's loving it. And then also here is a really nice yellow gold hammer. And one other hammer. It's this purple like gold tip that I got from Murph. Look at that thing. Loving it. Then we got some more frog spawns. So this is the one that I've been growing out for three years now, and then I fragged it and grew it and fragged it. This is that crazy one that I got for 25 bucks at Reef Palooza, I think three years ago. It was pink, and it turned into this. That is going to be a lifetime keeper right there. That's one of my favorite corals. Then this is the frog spawn directly from Inappropriate Reefer's Tank. Really cool. It's like a dark purple with, with the uh, green tips. And then the reverse one that I got from Mikey is the green with purple tips and in the back is that pink frog spawn with orange tips and then the sinularia in the back i don't know if you guys remember that but when i got that it was literally like a little one inch nub and now when you step back it's it's going to be a really nice piece then i got the indo framer from carlos he's got tons of that stuff and more sps over here on the left side of the tank these are these are my type of SPS people. Super easy, super inexpensive, colorful, and they're growing fast. Up here, I did see this snail just ticking it off a little bit. This is that one that I broke off from that one in the back corner there. So this one does get super fluffy. It just got irritated right now. Then the tub stellata. And then in the back, that is the bubblegum digi. I'm giving it another shot. And as you can tell here, it's doing just fine. It's awesome. That's been a coral that I've gotten numerous times and it hasn't done well for some reason. Well, finally it's doing good. Then the Birds of Paradise. And in the back there's another piece. This is a this is a frag directly from Sanjay Yoshi's tank. It may look to you guys to be like another green thing. It's kind of like really yellowish, bright yellow. Just looks green here, but... That's a, uh, stylo, a stylo. Really cool though. It doesn't get super bushy like the other stylos do. So that's why I like it. It's almost like a digi the way the polyps are on it. And then I actually took another piece of the blue zing. This used to be a real tiny one. I like the blue zing so much I figure why not have two. One on this side of the tank in like kind of lower light because it's lower in the tank. And then this big monster over here. In real life, these are, the Zing is probably, I would say a half inch bigger than a standard baseball, and the ORA is almost the size of a standard girl softball. That's how big they are. They're, they're monsters. I love them. Could you imagine what, the, what this whole tank's going to look like in here? I'm not really doing much to it. I'm not putting any more coral on it. I want to give everything plenty of room to grow. 
So then my Roswell landing mushroom, as you guys can see here, it just won't stop splitting into little babies. I really liked it when it was just two huge ones, but I don't mind now that it's splitting. I'm sure this whole rock will get covered again. But look, oh, hold on. There, it's so that one's splitting. The one in the back is splitting. This one's not, this one's huge. So, and then this is the Amaze Balls Ganiapora. I've had really good luck with the uh, Ganiapora. Look at the colors on this thing. Look at, look at all the new babies. It's only been in my tank for two weeks and it's growing really well. Acans, I can't say enough about how good the Acans are doing. They're all doing really, really good. Bob's, Bob's chilling. This random yellow one is just randomly being yellow. That rainbow one in the back there I've had for six months, still got all its colors. The, uh, what is this, the Mardi Gras, looking good. I had that with one polyp. I can't wait for, again, for a year because this yellow one a year ago was just one polyp. And it's mushed out to be like three inches in diameter. So I'm hoping this whole rock structure, this whole side here is just gonna be all mushy polyps from the uh, A cans. And then let's take a side boob. Look at, I mean, I'm gonna show you guys why this water is so freaking crystal clear. Look at it. You can't even tell there's water in there. Um, and then here's the Ecto Ganiapora, and that's the Miami Vice. And that is the um, Stylo, or that's the Sephastria, the Jason Fox Sephastria right there. I forget the name of it. Dang it. The Bizarro. That's what it is, the Bizarro. Now let's take a real quick look down at the filtration to give you guys a full, full update of the 75. Same thing, not doing anything crazy. Still using my single sump sock. Goes down in here, got some spheres, some rock. That's where I keep my frag rack when I don't have frags on it. I think it's important to keep it in your tank so that when you, know, you go to put it back up top, it's not gonna get all the diatoms and algae growing on it. You can see that the coralline is still growing on it. Still doing good down here. The, uh, you know, the daylight that comes in through the windows, it's just enough to keep the coralline going. Still have my spheres in there and still rocking the Essence 130 Reef Octopus Protein Skimmers doing real well. Pinky pads. And I'm still running that UV sterilizer. That's the Aqua UV 15 watt sterilizer that I did a video on. That's why this water is so crystal clear and still running the dosing system, only dosing alkalinity and calcium. You guys can see here, I am writing down when I make new ones up. I have two spare jugs downstairs that are empty, so when I'm getting ready to swap them out, I don't go all the way down to the bottom. I get rid of like the last inch and a half of both, and I ditch them, you know, wash them out, and then I have the next one ready to go. And I'm still using the X1 dosers they're they're right on point I actually had to dose the nano tank today so I wanted to take 6.8 mils of alkalinity you know of soda ash and put it in the nano tank so I programmed it pulled this hose out put it in the cup and it actually gave me 6.7 mls so it doesn't get much more accurate than that especially for a like a $45 um, hold on especially for a $45 dosing system so 75 is crushing it, man. Love it. This is, like I said, about 16, 17 months in. I set it up right at the end of September of uh, 2018. So, yeah, love it. Everything's... I couldn't be more happy with the way things are going. Everything all in general. The sand, the rock, the fish, the corals, the lights, the filtration... Super simple. Oh, let's take a look here. I recently did some wire management. This is this is what my wires look like. Just a bunch of surge protectors and a bunch of Velcros and screws. Everything's super tight up against it so nobody can accidentally pull anything out and screw anything up. Does this help if I use the filter? Oh, there you go. But you can see, simple. No computer running my system. I do have the Wi-Fi surge protector running the skimmer, the auto top off, 
the power head and the UV sterilizer. And I am using the controller or the sensor for the uh, skimmer and the sensor for the heater. So been been real happy and it's just super simple. So now let's take a walk over to the nano tank. I will show you guys what's going on underneath first because it's simple. It's just a five gallon fish tank with auto top off water in it and a little Corian lid. I keep my calendar there. That's what I use to mark down any water changes or any changes in general. When I change out, you know, carbon in here or Fosgard in here, it's all written down so I don't forget. And I did end up putting the Wi-Fi search protector on this as well. So when I do water changes, I can just click everything instead of unplugging it. These things are awesome. I love it. I have the heater, the return pump, the power head, and the auto top off on this. And the only other outlet I need is for the AI Prime. So, still using the AI Prime HD with the 3D reefing diffuser. And I did take a bunch of the, you know what, this looks a little bit bright. Let me dim it down here. The, this tank is under a lot of white spectrum. It's still very blue as you can see here. It's still very blue, but it's a lot whiter than the 75. So, I'll look at the sand. Sand is looking nice and crisp. I did take a bunch of the GSP and I cut it up and glued it little pieces. Some in the back there. When you look through this cave, you can see some in the back. I glued it all over the place. That's what I wanted for this tank. Um, like I said in the past, only Dave's corals. This, this is stuff directly from him. And the skunk clowns are doing good. I am going to be getting two more for this tank. I think they'll be just fine if I put four in here. There's five anemones. This top one here's every day I look at it, I still think it's gonna split, but it doesn't. Look at these clowns, I love it. This one really never leaves, and this one's always swimming around. You know, it messes with this one, and then it'll come over here and it, it does its little thing, but at nighttime they do sleep in different nems, so maybe if I get two more, should be alright. That's what I'm thinking. I did, you guys can see these clips here, I am getting ready, I did get a DIY uh, screen top from Bulk Reef Supply, so I have to put that together and just slap it on here. I'm going to make it pretty decently snug, I don't have to worry about little fish jumping out, I am going to make it so that these guys can't jump out, but I got just the basic quarter inch white mesh, you know, with the black frame around it, um, probably going to leave like an eighth inch gap in the back for any future wires for you know uh, a, a new power head or something or maybe if I put two little ones in here but other than that I'm going to keep it pretty snug and pretty tight and that's it so both tanks mega update looking good let's go to blues real quick so we can uh, see how this looks under like a good blue there we go that's like super blue but look at these anemones. Look at the color on them things. I'm just envisioning this entire rock, a lot of the sand bed, having this ultra bright neon green GSP all over it. Look at that stuff. This is the kind with no polyps. It's just super long, fuzzy neon green. I think it's gonna be a really cool contrast if I can get enough of it to grow with these anemones. It's going to look super cool. And then, you know, that's it. Screen top i got to put on here, and then that's it. Just chill, kick back, let this thing do its thing. Now, you know what? Before I end the video, let's take a look at the 75 under all blues. Yeah, that is super blue. This is actually the top shelf aquatics settings when they take their pictures. Under radions, if you want to get something like this, you turn your greens, your reds, both your whites completely off. You put your UVs and your violets at 100%. You put your royal blue at 100%. And you put your blue at 50%. And then just fudge around with the intensity. But yeah, that's super, I mean, look at that. Super blue. Looks really good if you want to take certain pictures of, you know, certain coral. But you can see the difference now with these... Playboy bunnies and the 
Halle Berry's. But the color on everything under this spectrum is phenomenal. Super crazy. Let's take a look at the Amaze Balls. Yeah. Yep. And these A cans are looking fresh. And what we'll do is we'll end it off the OG. And that's it. Super happy with everything. I know this was a long one. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you guys later. All right, I just want to thank you guys again for stopping by. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And while you're here, hit that little crab icon to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell for any future videos or updates. And in case you haven't seen these two videos, you might want to click on one and check it out. Again, thanks for stopping by.